Okay, we're going to be uh, demonstrating how to create the Hello Per project. And as we go through, I just want to explain what some of the various components are that we're going to be working with. When we create a project, we click on the project link, and we can see a list of all of our projects by doing this. But I'm creating the new project, so I'm going to click on the new button, new project button. And I'm going to call this app Hello Per. And I'm going to click on OK. And notice that then immediately takes me into a screen which has the um, has the palette in it. So this is the designer window. Uh, let's just get a little orientation. The name of my project is up in the upper left hand corner. I have over on the right hand corner on the top, I have something that says designer. That's darkened and that means I'm in the designer window. If I click on the other one, it says blocks. I'm going to go back to designer. Let's talk about what these are. There's a palette immediately out to the left hand side. And those represent components that we would want to put into our user interface, which is in sort of the center of the screen. There's four areas. There's a palette. There's a viewer. The viewer is where I see the application that I'm actually building. I take components from the user interface, and I actually pull them into the viewer window. There's also a place as I'm creating the components that will be in my user interface where they will show in the components area. Notice down towards the bottom there's a rename and a delete button and we'll be looking at those. And then as we work with App Inventor, there are characteristics that we can change about particular user interface components. And they are demonstrated and this will depend upon the particular component that we're working with. But I'll see various features I can change, such as I may be able to change the background image, or I may be able to change the title on the screen, or I may be able to change um, depending, again, upon the particular components. So let's get ready to start our first application. And the first application we are going to build is going to be an application that consists of three components. It will have a button uh, that we will create, and that button is going to have an image in it. So I'm going to start by taking and pulling. I click on a user interface component in the palette over on the right hand side, and I drag it into my viewer. And as I drag it into the viewer, it just pops into the place that I want to put it. Now I'm going to rename this button, and so I'm going to go over to the component area, and I'm going to click on rename. You'll notice I have an old name for my button, and I have a new name, and we're going to name that BTN. And the reason we're doing that is because many times when you go over to the blocks area and you're working with components, it's, if you don't have good naming conventions on the components that you're working with, it's kind of hard to tell what you're doing. And so this is clearly going to be a button. I know it's not going to look like one, but after we get done with it. But it is clearly a button object or component that we're working with. So I'm renaming it. And notice up under the component area, it now says BTN Hello Per. Now, in that button, I want to place an image. So I'm going to go over to the Properties window. And I'm actually going to take that image property I'm going to upload a file. So you'll notice in the middle here it says choose file. And I'm going to go find my kitty image. And I'm going to load that in. Now, seems like kind of a strange thing to have. This is actually the first program when Google first created App Inventor that they came up with. A very simple program. So I want to change a couple of things on this. This is my button. But I want to change, whoops, sorry about that. I want to change the height and the width on it. So I'm going to go down to the width property. And I'm going to say that I want that to be exactly 200 pixels. And I'm going to go to the height. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change it and click on the number of pixels. And you'll notice down on the bottom right hand area, I just changed that. So I've now just changed the size of it. Now it also has that annoying text on it that says text for button one. 
Well, I don't want any text in there. So I'm going over to the text field and I'm just pushing the space bar and or the backspace key and getting rid of the text altogether. And when I click outside, notice the text in that area has disappeared as well. OK, um, I have my button done. It's pretty much all I need to do for it. Now, I would like to have a label down below. So I'm going to grab that label and I'm going to move it down here. Now, it over in the component area, it says label 1. But you know, I don't really plan to do anything with that label. I'm not going to do any programming, per se, with it. So I'm just going to name this, uh, this um, label itself by changing the text. And once I've got that, I'm going to go over here and to the properties area where it says text for label 1, I'm just going to say pet the kitty. And when I press enter, it changes the text there. Now notice I did not change the label. The label is still called label 1. But I don't really need anything named there because, again, I'm not going to program anything. Now the third component that I need is something that we call a media component. And it's down in the palette underneath the area that says media. So I click on media. Notice when I go to user interface and I come down here and click on media, it pops up with all these other components. So I want to be able to have sound in my project. So I drag it out. Now it doesn't matter where I put the sound component because the sound component is always going to show down in the non-visible component area. And that's because we won't see a sound on the app that we're building itself. But I am going to name this. I'm going to come up here and click on the component. And I'm going to rename this. And I'm just going to say meow. That's going to be the name of my component. Now, to that sound component, I want to actually attach a sound with it. So I'm going over to the source property. Notice over here, I'm going to choose Upload File. And I'm going to go find my MP3 file. These were on the course website for you. And I'm going to click on Open. And I'm going to say OK. Now, I have three components. One is called Button Hello Purr. The other one is just a label with a description on it. And the other one is Meow. So now I am ready to go over to the blocks area and start my actual programming. Now, remember, we design the application in the designer window. When we want to program those components, we go over to the blocks window. So I'm going to click on blocks, which is up in the upper right-hand corner. And now everything has changed again. This window looks very different. Let's kind of get ourselves oriented to it. There's really two areas in here. There's a blocks area off to the side. And the little things that we see down the side that say built in, screen one, and so on, these are called drawers. When I click on a particular drawer, like the control door, I will see that there are various components here that I can use to create my program. If I click on logic, oh, I see some things true, false here. If I click on colors, I'll see various colors here. But the ones, the drawers that we want to use today that we want to do some programming for are under the drawer that is specifically for the components that I built. Notice here's my screen drawer. Here's my button, hello purr. Here's my label, and here's my meow. Now, what I want to be able to do when I create this application is Remember, this is a button. When somebody clicks on that button, it says win BTN hello per dot click. So what that essentially means is when somebody clicks on that button, do this. Well, there's nothing to do in there. But I have to start out by first telling it what I want to do. So I drag that and move it out into what is called the viewer area. And what I've done is I've placed my first block, which is really a set of instructions. What that block says is when somebody clicks on the button that was named hello per, btn hello per, do whatever is inside of this area. Well, I don't have anything inside that area yet. What would I possibly want to do? 
Well, I might want to get that MP3 sound to play, which is the sound of a cat. So now I'm going to click on the meow component and look at the things I could do. I could call meow pause. I could call meow play. Hmm, meow play, that's really what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click that. I'm going to drag it out. Notice if I put it down here, it just sits down here. It says that will play the sound. But watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to click and drag this. And notice as I move it up into that area, there's kind of a shape that it fits into that area. It gets a little bit of a different color. And I might hear a slight click to tell me that that's actually bonded together. So essentially, what I just built my first program. And what that program says is when the button hello purr is clicked, do this, call the meow sound, the sound that we associated with the meow uh, component, and play that sound. So now we're ready to actually run this program or execute it. We're going to go back to the designer window, and now we are going to start the whole process with that emulator. So if you remember, the steps I have to do are I have to open the AI starter first. There's my AI starter window. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to open up my emulator and connect my emulator. Well, I hope this works. This might take a minute or two, remember. It's starting the emulator. Essentially what's happening is it's starting the emulator. And then after it's started the emulator, it's going to connect to the companion website, which is the MIT App Inventor 2 website. I'm just going to patiently wait. OK, it's starting the companion. I'm going to move this out to the side a little bit. And well, it says it's starting it again. It's making sure that it's going to be able to run. This is looking like it might be pretty good. Oh, let's see. Oh, there's something in the corner, and there's my cat. So now, if I click on the cat, my component that I set up should work, which were when I click on the cat image, which is a button, it should play, I don't know if you can hear that. It might be very soft on your end. For me, it's a little bit louder. I can actually hear my cat meowing. So that's our very first program that we're ever writing. And let's hope that this was a good recording. And that concludes our recording.